Greetings and welcome to Temple Baptist Church in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. I must make a confession to you today. I was uh, taking care of my uh, visitors, my children from out of town a couple weekends ago. My wife was also out of town, and so I was trying to do some cooking along that time. Kind of a challenge for me. One of the reasons is I needed to put something in the oven. It was supposed to cook for a certain temperature for about 20 minutes and then a different temperature for about 45 minutes. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know how to work the timer on our oven. Uh, it's a little smarter than I am. But not to be outdone, I did know how, I do know how, to uh, work the uh, uh, stopwatch on my uh, iPhone. The, the, the stopwatch. It gives us seconds. It gives us uh, even beyond that. And then it gives us minutes. And so uh, I would set uh, the timer. Uh, it would uh, go for a certain amount of time and then it would make a, a ding and I would know that I needed to go do something in the kitchen at that point. Uh, I was watching the Super Bowl the other night. Uh, at one play toward the end of it, uh, I noticed that one of the teams was getting close to the play clock running out. And so very quickly they took a timeout. There are play clocks, uh, shot clocks in basketball, you might call them. Uh, and theoretically, if you didn't have those, uh, those clocks, uh, one team could get the ball, the first possession of the game, and theoretically, if you didn't have periods and halves and quarters and different things, uh, theory, in theory, you could keep the ball and not let the other team ever have it. And then at the very last few seconds of the game, having had the ball through the entire game, you could make a basket and then you win the game. Uh, now, of course, they do have those uh, shot clocks, those play clocks in order uh, that that can't happen. And so there's a passage of scripture that kind of uh, speaks to this, if you will. In Romans chapter 13, the Bible says this, and do this knowing the time that it is high time to awake out of our sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. The day is near. There's a phrase there that says, now it is high time. That phrase, an old idiom, if you will, that phrase literally means that it's time to do something. In fact, it's past time. Most likely something should have already been done when we use that phrase, it's high time. And the scripture here is talking about that we need to know the time. We need to be cognizant of how the second hand, how the minute hand, how the hour hand uh, so quickly moves that now it is high time to awake out of our sleep or out of our complacency, if you will. For now, our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. That's not hard to believe, is it? Uh, it just makes sense. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Over in Acts chapter 1, uh, the Lord Jesus, by the time of Acts chapter 1, had already been crucified on the cross. He had been resurrected. Uh, he had come back and he had shown himself to many people with what the Bible calls infallible proofs that he had died and that he was resurrected again. Uh, he was gathered there with his disciples one day, and uh, the Bible says he was taken up into heaven. And his disciples were looking up and they were amazed at the fact that Jesus had risen into heaven and God had given them a, a job to do after Jesus was raised into heaven. And listen to what the Bible says there. Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. One of these days, the Lord is going to come again. He's going to gather his church. There will be a time and then there will be the end of time and nothing we can do can stop that day. And the Bible tells us it's now high time that we prepare ourselves spiritually 
for the day when the Lord returns. None of us know when that's going to be. The Bible's very clear about that. I know there are so many people today that they've done the math. Uh, they've uh, searched the scriptures and many of them think they know, but the Bible's very clear. Even Jesus says, no one knows the day or the hour. That's in God's hands. That's in the Father's hands. And so we don't know when it is. I remember playing that old game, hide and seek. And one person counts to 10, and then the rest of the players will go and hide themselves. And after the one who counts to 10, the one who's to go find those who are hidden, gets to 10, there are those famous words, ready or not, here I come. One of these days, ready or not, Jesus is going to come again. And the scripture that we looked at today tells us that we need to be ready. It's high time. Jesus' coming is closer than it's ever been. We know that to be the fact. It just makes sense. And so my prayer for you, God's desire for you, is that you would be prepared for it is high time. We should have already been prepared. Wake up from our complacency. Help others get prepared for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ because just as he was raised into heaven, he will come again in like manner. And he will judge humanity in that day. The Bible tells us if we confess our sins, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, to believe that Jesus died and was raised again to pay our sin debt, and that if we ask him, he will do that very thing. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so let me encourage you with the fact Jesus is coming again. And when he comes again, those who have been prepared for his coming, those who have accepted Jesus as the forgiver of their sin, the savior of their souls, and the Lord of their lives will spend eternity in a perfect place called heaven. Would you prepare yourself today by asking the Lord to forgive you, believing that Jesus died and rose again. And if you'll pray it, he'll do it. God bless you today. Hope you have a most blessed day. Father, thank you. Thank you for giving us this, this encouragement that a better day is ahead. And Lord, may we be prepared for the coming of Jesus Christ again. Lord, one day time will be no more. We'll be ushered into eternity. And for those who are prepared in Jesus, we'll spend eternity in your presence in a place with no tears, no sorrow, no pain, no sickness, and no death. Oh, what a day that will be. Thank you for that promise. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless.